This is Catherine Parker from The Haunting of Hill House. You're listening to Derek Thomas and the Monday Morning Critic Podcast. Hey, this is comedian Jim Florentine, and you're listening to the Monday Morning Critic Podcast. He told me, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Good morning, Vietnam! Keep the change, you filthy animal. In the Wild West world of podcasting, where podcasts are dominated by hosts who deliver a below-average product, and each unlistenable podcast is trying to be like the next, there is one podcast that is authentic and genuine and continues to stand tall in its originality. Based on a passion for his guests, their work, and his love of podcasting, Derek Thomas and Monday Morning Critic Podcast get amazing, diverse, unique guests found nowhere else. They include Hall of Fame athletes, Academy Award winners, Golden Globe winners, Super Bowl champions. Emmy winners, award-winning authors, award-winning film score composers, directors, trailblazers, pioneers, and inventors. The variety and quality are endless. There is something for everyone. Derek Thomas is the hero you deserve. He's a silent guardian, a watchful protector. Welcome to Monday Morning Critic Podcast. Here is Derek Thomas. Welcome to the Monday Morning Critic Podcast. This is episode 123. My next guest is a wonderful actor slash producer who most recently just finished up season 9 of The Walking Dead. Please welcome the very talented Kelly Mack. Kelly, how are you today? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. So I gotta say, so like, I'm looking at your entire life and and it's almost creepy how much time I've spent (laughs) watching your videos on Vimeo. Like, if I wasn't interviewing right now... (laughs) Like, if I wasn't a podcast host, I'd be a stalker because I felt I've watched your videos so much. Oh, man. Well, there's a lot of videos up there. So, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So and before I um, I get to a lot of the, the, the substantial stuff, I, um, I have to say, how, how's the head? Uh, Advil working for you? Are you all right? Um <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, it's good. You know, it's it's been in recovery mode. A little bit of Advil, ibuprofen is my my drug of choice. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> getting through it. Yeah, boy, you weren't expecting two dad jokes right off the bat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what the funny thing about that is, and I want to I want to get into the Walking Dead because I I really enjoyed what I saw from you. Um, is that not it, it's not demented enough to stick someone's head on a stick? You have to make sure the glasses are on the head. Oh yeah, I when I saw that for the first time, I was like, "Holy shit, <laughs> that's real! That's amazing!" <laughs> that, that, that's and what else is amazing is yesterday I interviewed another young actor who is in um, the Highway Man. He plays um, Clyde Barrow. He dies an epic death. You die an epic death. This has been a weekend of epic deaths on screen, I suppose. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So let, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, Chapman University for a bit here. So uh, I was I was just checking that out, and I was checking out you know famous alum. I'm looking at you. Uh, you're in good company. You have Colin Hanks, right? So um, talk a little bit about Chapman, and you know how much of what you did at Chapman because I what I really love about what you've done, and, and, and I, this is maybe the first I've seen of this, and I've interviewed tons of actors, is that being an actor for you is not. I'm not going to say it's not good enough, but I I think you have bigger sights. Like you, I think being an actor is what you want, but I also think producing is is up your alley as well. And I I really believe this because, and I hope I'm right on this, your major at Chapman or your majors at Chapman were cinematography and film production. Am I right on both of those? Um, yeah, you're, you're totally, you nailed it. Um, I studied film production, um, with an emphasis in cinematography and then I had a, a minor in business. So I, I didn't go to school for acting specifically. It was kind of after college that I realized acting is what my focus was going to be. But producing is definitely something that I really enjoy doing. And it's something that I foresee myself continuing to do in the, the rest of my career. Now, here. was was cinematography, was that was that a major, a minor? Was that, was that something you spent a lot of time with in college? Yeah. So at Chapman... Um, well, I'll, I'll go back to, so in, in, uh, let's see, when I was really young, my mom, uh, got my, my, my brother and I into acting and 
basically my way of rebelling against my mother was to say, no, actually, I don't want to be an actress. I'm going to do everything else that I can in high school and college and not do what you want me to do, <laughs> which is not normal because most parents are like, don't do acting, whatever you do. That's a terrible decision. But my mom was like, you should do it. Um, and so in high school, I, I discovered, um, I guess, cinematography in a, a tiny way. Uh, I, I just loved uh, filming people. Um, specific. I was very shy, so I, I filmed. I, I liked uh, kind of taking a back seat and listening and watching everyone around me. Um, and I have a pretty big family, so I, I'd be the one in the corner filming everyone <laughs> yeah. when we go over the holidays and everything. And uh, so that is what led me to want to study cinematography in in college. Um, so that's why I went to Chapman um, for the cinematography program and for uh, I played tennis um, competitively my my entire life. So I, I went there to play tennis as well. Well, yeah, and that was my next question because the the, the first thing is um, is it's really impressive that somebody who wants to get into acting realizes the importance of cinematography, right? Because I know there's other aspects to acting, you know, studying and, and mentor and you know theater yeah. and all the other stuff, but the cinematography portion is impressive. And I know you said you're shy, but you know the fact that you kind of wanted to really invest your education in that that's huge, Kelly. And I don't see that a lot. Oh well. I mean, thank you. Yeah. It's, it's just, I, I love learning new things. Like school was, I really enjoyed school. So whenever there's an opportunity to teach myself a new program, like I, I taught myself how to, I mean, there were classes in, in, at Chapman that taught us how to, you know, edit. And they, they had us dip into all different aspects of filmmaking, like directing, production design, uh, sound, all that stuff. And then by junior year, you chose what you wanted to focus on. And obviously I went with some cinematography, but in, in the process, I learned so much about behind the scenes, uh, behind the camera. And I, that's been so, so essential. And I feel like in a way I have a little bit of a leg up, um, coming it, coming to LA, knowing what goes on on a set in every different, um, every different field. So I just feel very prepared and more comfortable and like I can do my job better as an actress. No, you're very sincere and it's clear you're passionate because, you know, I, as I said, I was watching videos today and one of them was a knock at the door that a short that you made in 2016, really well done. And it's pretty clear just from that short, how much respect you have for cinematography. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you that's going to get you, I mean, outside of your phenomenal ability the fact that you respect the other facets of, of movie making, uh, televisions, and so forth, that's huge. I think that only can help you as you go forward. Oh, definitely. And it's, that's why I love um, producing in, in, like, with acting so much because I love uh, and I know what good cinematography looks like and what I, I just love bringing crews together and finding the best people for the job in all the different fields. And so that's why I, when I discovered producing, which was not until really a knock at the door, um, that I was like, Oh, I want to do this in addition to acting. Kelly, what's a movie you've seen either recently or, or, or within your, you know, uh, a lifetime that you've really loved the cinematography where it really had a kind of hit home with you. And you're like, my God, that's beautiful. Oh man. There's just so many. Um, I mean, I love, Ra I, what was it? Um, I remember seeing they showed us Prisoners in college, uh, which was shot uh, De Denis Villeneuve. Oh, uh, good call! Uh, yes, yes. That. And I believe it was Roger Deakins who shot it. Mm. Um, and he also did like Skyfall. I, I love his work. His work is very, um, it's just very clean. And he's a he's the Steven Spielberg of cinematographers. He's he's the he's, man. I mean, he's just wonderful. Yeah. So he was kind of the first name that I was introduced to. And I've kind of always, uh, I don't know, gone back to his projects and I've been consistently so impressed by his work. So No, that's well said. And, and, you, and you know, you, you mentioned the tennis part. And I I watched another video. If you get a restraining order after this video, I, to, after this <laughs> interview, I totally get it. Um, I got to say, so I'm watching you play tennis and I'm like blown away. Like your backhand, your, I'm like – and I thought I read, and if I'm wrong on this, I apologize, that you were ranked competitively as well. Yes. Uh, woof, that was 
that was a big part of my life. Tennis. Um, the reason, so my, I have a, I'm a part of a very big sports family. Um, I have lots of coaches in my family, aunts and uncles and my, my late grandpa and, uh, baseball and softball are, were kind of the, they're kind of the focus of my extended family. And so just having that sports background, that was always, um, a big part of my life growing up. Um, my siblings and I, we, my parents got us into all different types of sports. They're like, you need to try everything, um, and have that team mentality and kind of choose a sport that you think you want to pursue and, um, stick to and focus on. And that would potentially help you get into college. Um, and so tennis was what I enjoyed the most. And, yeah, I went to, gosh, I remember my dad had this Excel spreadsheet that like laid out the, all the tournaments that I was going to be going to like at least once or twice a month leading up to college. Um, and so I, I was living in hotels, constantly playing tennis and it did help me get into Chapman. And, uh, I was nationally ranked, um, in the Midwest mm. or I, I was, ranked in the Midwest as well as nationally. It was just a big part of my life. So, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, that's, that's a fantastic achievement. And, you know, um, just, you know, how much of, of you know, obviously you're pretty clear about your, your tennis, how important that is to you or was to you. Um, mm-hmm. any, do you take any of that with you in um, acting or, or, you know, producing? Does any of what you've learned for being an athlete, and it's such a generic question, and I, I hate to ask it, but have you taken any lessons from your life on the road as a, as a tennis player, um, with you now? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, you know, when I was trying to figure out why I loved, uh, being on set so much and why I loved being on a team so much is I, when I realized they're, they're basically the same thing. It's like you have this second family, um, apart from your immediate family. And I have a great family support system, but having, tennis, uh, and loving the relationships and the camaraderie that was formed throughout high school and college. I, I was just like, this translates so well to, to filmmaking and being on a set. And, um, I just, I think it helped me, uh, work with people better. Um, and you know, collaboration is, is the name of the game when it comes to filmmaking. So no, that's, yeah, you're right. Yeah, well said. And, and, and I know that you, you've also kind of done piano. You, you've done a little bit of Spanish and French. Um, how much? I mean, are you? How would you classify yourself as a piano player? Uh, beginner, somewhere in the middle, advanced? How, where, where would you put yourself? I'd say somewhere in the middle. I I took lessons when I was young. Uh, I was probably like age 10 to 10 to 13 or 14 around there. And I, I didn't, I did lessons for probably just about three or four years. Um, so now I, I have, I have like a little a full keyboard in my, in my bedroom that I like to play just for fun to relax now. But, um, yeah, I don't, I haven't like, I want to play it more, but I'm not an expert or anything. I'm, I'm good with uh, sheet music. That's I, like my brother, he can, uh, improvise, uh, especially with jazz music, and I'm just like blown away. I can't do that. I'm like sheet music person. Right, right, right. And, and you know, you, you mentioned you know you, you know some of your training and so forth. You know, and I was looking. You've you've done countless workshops and theater, and music studio. I mean, improv. Um, has has all of that been extremely helpful for you? Have you feel like that that's all made a difference? Definitely. I mean, there are like, for example, improv. I would say at least comedic improv. That is so challenging. And I, I haven't gone further into it because I, I don't have as much of a desire to, to pursue that. Um, but I think what I like doing is just kind of dipping into all these different things so that I can take little bits and pieces and use what is, what is helpful to me. But like I've done dramatic improv. So even doing a comedic improv class at, at UCB has been helpful for that. Um, yeah, I mean, it all, it all comes down to it and I'm a, and I'm a huge note taker. So I just have like notebooks and, oh my God, my, my phone is full of so many notes because I'm <laughs> taking like acting notes or like a character note that I see someone on the street. Yeah. No. And, and it's also clear that, um, 
that, that you definitely are somebody who has a good sense of humor, and, and it takes guts to go into an improv class because that could be overwhelming. I would imagine. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was very overwhelming, and I have I have some friends who are great stand up comedians, and that scares the shit out of me. That's something I've never done. I mean, maybe I'll do it at some point in the future, but. I just have a lot of respect for those people because I think that's the, the most terrifying. Well, thing. You, you seem like you're somebody that that is not afraid to push to push yourself to where you're uncomfortable, and I think that that would certainly be a an avenue to go down as far as just to do it <laughs> once to to really push yourself. That would be pretty challenging, I would imagine. Oh man! Well, <laughs> there's I mean, there's another thing I learned from tennis is it, it's funny people would tell me that they could never tell if I was winning or losing because I just kept my mental state so down, down the middle and like hid every emotion that I was feeling. So sometimes it seems like I've got all my shit together, but I might actually be terrified and stand up for sure is intimidating, but maybe sometime in the future. <laughs> yeah. And, and do you, do you talk acting with Parker? Uh, for those of you who don't know, Parker is uh, Kelly's brother. Do you talk acting with him? Oh my gosh. Yes. he, uh, I mean, he was over here at my apartment like three days ago, uh, taping an audition. It's great. Cause we can, we can tape each other and read lines and stuff, but you know, we're, we're brother and sister and I, we've, we've moved, my family's moved around a lot, so we're very close, but we don't need to spend tons of time together. Cause he lives just 20 minutes away. Right. So he usually like we, we tape our auditions and, and talk acting with our, with our f- other friends also. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's nice to have him, uh, as a support system out here and, you know, hear his ideas about his, um, from his acting coaches. Cause he takes from a different, uh, coach than I do. So it's cool to just share our, our thoughts and what we've learned. Yeah, that's well said, and, and I have to say, you know, you're clearly a hard worker by your your, your resume, your your you know the the fact that you continue to take classes, you're always you know taking notes, and, and I'm kind of the same way a little bit, and, and, and you seem like <laughs> you're super you're super talented, right? And, and I don't mean to be creepy, but you know, you're stunning. You have a great look to you, um, and, and I swear, if you were in any other profession, and I said that, it would be completely awkward. <laughs> But it's like I really feel though, like for females in your field, you have it a lot tougher than the guys do. I, there's no question about that. Yeah, I mean it's it's tough, but I I'm hoping that ugh, it's 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 a weird thing because it's so competitive, but you just want so badly for everyone to be supportive of each other, and it's just it's not always like that, especially with women and. It's unfortunate, um, you know, you'll get like dirty looks in, in casting offices. But then there's I have a great group of friends who, um, you know, are not like that. And they're actors and we're all very supportive of each other. Um, so it's it's hard to find those those people that support system. But I'm super happy with the group of friends that I have and we don't deal with those issues. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to leave it at just, at just stunning, but I was getting to a point where like you have like range. So, so we see you as Addy, you're definitely selling the teenager role there, but then I saw something, um, I think it was a short called positive. Am I right about that? Oh yeah. That was, uh, the first, that was my first short film I made where you yeah. look, my God, it was like, wow. I'm like, is this the same person? I mean, it's, so your range is fantastic. Like that's something that that's going to work in your favor outside of your phenomenal work ethic, outside of your uh, you know tremendous ability. So that's that's uh, something that you could really pull off. That not all actors, male or female, um, are able to pull off. Kelly, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, I'm hoping it it helps as well. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm looking at your life here. You know, um, you know, you have a lot of products, uh, projects. Sorry, in pre production. I want to get to those uh, in a second. Um, do you find that, you know, when you look at acting, right. Um, and and like I said, I don't want to be redundant, but I'm really, I love the fact that you, you kind of look at, uh, movie making and and TV, you know, making a TV, uh, a show or, or series, you look at it in in a bigger way, right? You look at it from the cinematography point of view, you look at it from a production point of view. When you look at acting, right. Is there an actor out there that you say, you know what? I love her path or I love his path. That's kind of how I'd like to go down. Is there a specific actor that you look at and you're like, you know, I'd like to pattern my 
my career after that because I love the way that actor went about handling their business? Um, hmm. You know, I, I get that question a lot and it always kind of changes uh, just because I, that's one thing about me is I, sometimes I have a hard time like choosing favorites that like, I could never say what my favorite movie is. It's just like, it's so impossible. And it's same thing with actors. Like, I mean, there's definitely re- actors I respect and, you know, I've thought about that. Like, is there someone that I want to have a, a career like that I want to emulate? And there's been, I have like a list of actors that who are established, um, much more established than me and who I feel like, uh, kind of have the same sort of essence that I, I believe people, um, uh, think I give off. Um, so there's, I mean, I can't, I can't, but I, but then I go back and I'm like, I want to be me. I'm, I'm myself. No, I get that. I get that. Yep. Oh yeah. And I don't mean to say that in like a, an egotistical way either. I just, it's hard for me to, to decide like if there's someone that I, I can't, I don't know. I can't predict the future, but I mean, some of the, some actors that I love, uh, right now, uh, going back to prisoners, I love Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, I think he's awesome. He's, I've just heard he's a very, uh, hard worker. So I relate to that, obviously. Um, I mean, I love Emmy Rossum in, uh, in Shameless. I think she has a lot of range, which is cool to me. Um, yeah. No, and that completely makes makes sense. And you know, I mean, because it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a favor. Because you know, you lo- you appreciate so much. You, you know, you mentioned Roger Deakins, so a part of you admires him. And you know, it's not necessarily like one person. Like you could admire, you know, a way uh, a certain actor produces one way, or you could admire a certain way an actor goes about their business in another. You know, so it's kind of a loaded question because there's really no right answer. I mean, and and it does change all the time. You're right. Yeah. I mean, there's so much content out there. I feel overwhelmed sometimes. Like I'll forget what I watched the other day though. Oh, I want, okay. I do remember what I watched the other day. Last night I was watching, um, the next, the newest season of the OA. Have you heard of that show? Yes. On Netflix. Okay. Uh, it was, oh my gosh. And now I'm blinking on the name. Zal Batman Gleej. Uh, if that's how you pronounce his name, he came to Chapman while I was there when I was taking this, uh, uh, he came to talk for one of our classes and I just remember being obsessed with his work and, um, Oh gosh, what's the actress in the OA? What's her name? I don't know. Why I'm forgetting it. We saw the movie sound of my voice. Have you seen that? Yes. Okay. I, w- Oh, Brit Marling. So I loved, I love their collaboration. They, they do lots of like, I love sci-fi stuff and really meta sort of under trying to understand the meaning of life sort of thing. And yeah, I, I love their work and so, everything they've done together. Well, you mentioned Denis Villeneuve. So you must have loved, uh, was it the arrival with Amy oh, Adams? I, yes. That was my favorite movie that year. Yeah. Cause that's, that's exactly what you're talking about. I mean, that's right up your alley. And when, when I think of your career, it makes me think a little bit of Octavia Spencer, right? Because she's a great actor. She's been a producer. She takes pride. It's just, you, there's some That's, similarities there, you know? It's hilarious because I, I have some friends who've uh, worked on several movies with her, and she just seems, yeah, I guess I never thought about that. She, seems she has like, her shit together for sure. Yeah. yeah, she's no BS, you know? Because I talk to some actors, and, and 98% of my guests have been phenomenal. But, you know, some people are, I wonder why they're in it. Like, I, I wonder, like, what, where's the passion coming from? Why are you doing this? You know, and, um, but I, I don't wonder that with you at all. Like, I, I clearly get why you love what you do. Like, you, you just love being, or doing what you do. It, it just resonates off of you. Yeah, I totally do. It's just telling stories. And, I mean, the reason I love acting so much is, first, I love making people just, like, feel something real and connect with each other or connect with themselves in by seeing a part of themselves in, in a character that I play or that my, you know, castmates play. And I just love learning about different types of people from different walks of life. And acting is the perfect opportunity to do that. And like, that's why I've done so many short films is because all the characters are so different. Like I don't, I'm not going to do a short film and really commit everything to it unless I 
will find some reason to to show this character or tell this important message or story. No, and Kelly, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, like you are making short films. Like, that is so far above what most people your age. That is what you're doing at your age. And, and I'm not trying to make you know uh, sound like you like you're like a 12 year old, but like <laughs> you're, you're doing like what you're doing now is so advanced for where you are in your life. Like. Most people are, are not doing this, you know, making shorts. But, but that's just like true love of the craft. Like that's, I, I don't know. I, and I'm not, I, I'm not trying to patronize you. I'm not trying to be over the top. But oh, that's, a, that's a perfect example of what I'm trying to say. Like who is making shorts? Like that is the heart of filmmaking. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, I mean, it's the be, just the beginning stages. Like why no one makes money on short films. Like you got to do it if, if you love it. That's the only reason you do. Uh, I totally agree. And, and, and you know, one of the th- this kind of stems from the tennis question a little bit. Do, are, do you do, I mean, you're in phenomenal shape. Are, do you have an exercise routine? Do you have a routine where it's like, okay, you know, forget the mental stuff for a little bit. I, you know, I got to go run today. I got to do this. I got to stay active. Do, do you find yourself in that position too? Do you have a, a routine like that every, every day? Um, no. So, okay. Because I played sports growing up, um, all different kinds, I... When, when I graduated college, I was like, oh, wow, okay. It's hard to, like, find people to go play tennis with, and I can't use this as my actual workout routine. So it took me a little while to figure out what I was going to do, but I used this app called ClassPass. Um, and so basically you're allowed to – you subscribe to this service that allows you to, um, like – reserve a class time at any different, like all different studios around the city. Um, so I, I always need to switch it up. So I like usually, you know, work out several times a week. Um, some, some weeks less than others, but I I'll just like do different things. I, I really like, uh, this thing called bar method. Um, I do a lot of circuit training. Um, and then I love being in nature. So I'll just hike, I, I try to a couple times a week. Um, I'm not like a running type of person. I, I can't go into a gym unless someone's like yelling at me and telling me what to do. <laughs> Otherwise I'm like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> no. Yeah. I completely get it. You know, um, absolutely. And, and, you know, obviously one of the, one of the bigger moments in, in your, in your relatively young career is, is the walking dead. Um, and I've had many of the cast of the walking dead on the show. Um, was it like this for you? Did you get called in for one part? Uh, you read for one part and you ended up getting another? Um, not in the same, like, well, okay. I auditioned. I actually went back and looked to see if I had it taped for the show before I taped for, for Addie. And I realized that I had, I taped, uh, for a character back in 2016. Um, and, it was a totally different character, obviously. And I think it was actually one of Megan's wives when I went back and like was researching it. Um, and obviously didn't get that. And then it was in July of 2018, um, that they sent me a self tape audition for the character name was Abby at the time with B with the uh, two B's, which is funny. Cause that line I say, I spell my name with two D's. <laughs> um, I think that was for the confidentiality, uh, part of it, but I taped, for it on like a Monday or something. And then a week later I got another tape for a different character. I mean, but with the same sides and I was like, so in a different character breakdown. So the first character was not Addy. I messed up on that. The first character was some other character. Um, and then the next week was Addy. And so basically I just, I made it, I changed the character a teensy bit. I threw on some glasses cause they said she had glasses um, I made it a little bit younger in her reactions to things. And then, um, the, I sent it in and then like three days later on a Monday morning, the day before my birthday, they, they, my manager or my agent in North Carolina, they were like, Hey, can you come, can you be in Atlanta tomorrow for your fitting? Um, so that wow. was, that was cool. I got to do my fitting on my birthday. I was like, this is the best birthday <laughs> So did they reach out to you initially 
uh, Kelly, did they, read it? did they say, you know what, uh, before all the, you know, the casting, or is that something like your team w- w- would seek out, you know, obviously doing their job, but uh, how does that work? Do they reach out to you? Do you reach out to them? How, how does that work? So it's, um, it was my agent who they, so basically casting directors like put out breakdowns of characters and then my agent submitted me. They didn't reach out to me personally. They, they submitted my materials and then they asked me to self tape for it. Yeah, and I got to say, you know, um, I love The Walking Dead, so I feel like I, I've been there from the, from the first day, so I feel like I, I could, you know, criticize it in some ways and still love it, like like you criticize somebody in your family, but you still love them to death, right? It was a yeah. ph- phenomenal season, but there's times when I was doing research today and I see your ability, it's like, oh, and I'm going to be very careful how I word this because I'm, I'm not trying to insult anybody. Um <laughs> There are some people on The Walking Dead since the first day that have a large speaking part that you wish didn't. And then there's like super talented actors like you. That I don't want to say bottled up, but I, I wish the, the the universe could see what I know about you. Like I wish The Walking Dead universe could see, you know, how really talented you are, you know, versus, you know, a few lines here and there, which you absolutely nailed. And you were so good in that part, you know. Um yeah. Thank you. But but don't but but so I I don't want to set you up here with with a, with a with a baited question. But mm-hmm. does does a part of you are like it would have been cool if I had more lines, or are you kind of like you know what it is what it is, and I'm going to play the part to the best of my ability? Well, you know they the initial uh, email about the role um, when I taped for it, it was like this is a, a two episode. Um, it said two episodes dot dot dot. So it was just very open ended. Um, and so I thought I would only be there for two episodes and I was done. But then they extended it to five, which was such a blessing. So I was just super thankful for that. Like right. at the end, of course, I was like, oh, that's a bummer. But at the same time, I'm glad I got as much time as I did. And it was my first TV show. So I'm so happy for uh, the doors that it's been opening for me. And really, I'll, I'm just going to miss the cast. I mean, I still see several of them um, who've actually – uh, who live in LA. So it's, it's nice. But. No, yeah, and, and you deserve those opportunities because you clearly love, as I mentioned, not to be redundant, but you love the craft. You, you work your ass off. I mean, you really put your, put your heart into this and you, you did like your people. There's some people that like just stumble on success. Uh, mm-hmm. You're somebody who has worked her ass off for the <laughs> longest time. No, I'm serious. And you really like, like I'm so happy when good things happen to good people because it really happens in life, right? It's always the a holes that stumble on success, and it's like really, where somebody like you who's really, <laughs> am I right or am I wrong with that? I think I think you might be right. I just wonder why it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's karma, you know, and and, and I got to say, so um, I asked you about the dialogue question, and you you, you nailed that. Um, what ex- and I feel like Addie, right? Your character Addie. If she was in the 80s, she would have been right out of a John Hughes movie, right? She would have been right in that Molly Ringwald. Am I right with that? Is that just because I have curly hair? No. It's because it's like, uh uh-oh, it's the teenager provoking Lydia, who's the quote-unquote good girl, right? And, and, you know, trying to get her to go to a place she shouldn't be going. It's... But it's like, I, and, and it's amazing. Like I read, like, so I read a lot of the Walking Dead stuff on Facebook. I, I had to take, remove myself because I get so en- enraged. They hate, like, so this is a testament to how good you were, right? They hated you, and they hated those teenagers, right? So I got, I got to say, those. That's exactly what they want. That's the picture they wanted to paint with you guys, right? Your, your teenagers who kind of bait Henry. You, you, you bait. Um, 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 Lydia into you know either saying something negative or trying to do something negative. Uh, do, do I have that right? You know, I mean, is is that kind of what you've heard and seen as well? Yeah. Well, you know, I was surprised. Uh, I, I, I think from the beginning, um, like it was a kind of a running joke on set, especially with them. Um, I, I became close with. So Matt uh, Lintz, his his dad was always um, on set and we just kind of developed a, a nice relationship. And he was he would always joke to me about like the fans are going to hate you. They're really, <laughs> you're the, the tattletale and they, those ones always die and are hated. So I expected it. And I was like taking pleasure in that in a way. <laughs> um, but you know, I was also surprised by how many people were like kind of sad that my character died or that I, they felt like I, my character was just trying to do the right thing. And I, I mean, I think that's totally what she was trying to do. So 
you know, I don't think they can hate Addie completely because it's tough. Like, how do you, how do you decide, you know, how do you make the decisions that she had to make it? It's a tough thing. And in the end she did protect people, but then so many people died and it's like, who do you, who do you blame? So I, I get it. And it's, it's just so interesting to see. I love how people are so dedicated to the show. So you can, you can really be a part of, um, that conversation. So that's really fun. And, and, and that's well, that's really well said. And I think you do. And I'm not a fan of, of, of some of the people, not the people that the fan, I, I love the fans. Um, mm-hmm. I think you do really well at one of those, uh, comic cons. I think people would gravitate to you. I think I see how you are with people. I see how you are with, you know, your personality. I think, I, I think people would, cause you know, the two guests before you, uh, I had Avi Nash and I, I had Nadine Marissa and they both have done the Comic Con route, and they, they they've they found it to be. I I, I I'm not going to speak for them. I think they like it a lot. I, I yeah. think that would be a good route for you. You know, if, if if that was ever an opportunity for you, I think people would gravitate to you. I think they'd like you a lot. Wow, oh, thanks. Yeah, I like. I'm very open to it. Uh, I guess I just. I mean, Nadine actually, she's someone that I I've uh, met up with a couple times in LA. She's she's so sweet. Um, she you know, had told me about the whole convention thing. And I heard people talking about it on set, uh, several times. And it just seems like a cool opportunity to meet people who are fans of the show and your character and also see different parts of, you know, the country and the world, wherever you, wherever the convention is. But yeah, if the opportunity arises, I'm totally open to that. Yeah, Nadine, another actor, supremely talented who should have more lines, but a- anyway, um, but you, I have to say, I can also see you. I mean, she's, Cassidy's phenomenal, but I could also see you as Lydia. I really could. You know, I mean, not with the glasses, obviously, but like, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I could definitely see you handling that role. Like, I could see you getting angry. I could see you getting to the point where, you know, you're a little shady. You you, you got that anger in you. I, I could see you playing that role as well. Oh, thanks. That's 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 a meaty role. That would definitely be a, you know, she's she's done a great job with it and She's so talented and just the sweetest person. I don't know if you talked to her, but she is just, everyone will say she's such a bundle of energy and she totally is. She was literally, literally hopping around on set. Like when I, when I showed up to, and I like, you know, people normally are just like, they hug you and they're like, Hey, how you doing? She'll come up and jump around you and then hug you. (laughs) She's the opposite of her character, which I think is so cool because she's able to, you know, be herself on set and then also draw from these really deep, dark places, which I love doing. So yeah, that type, that type of role is totally like I'm drawn towards. So I, I mean, I, I, I would have loved to have seen the two of you kind of coexisting in that world and continuing down the road. Right. I mean, it would have been nice to, I mean, what, you know, what ifs, but, but still, I think that would have been a nice act. Be, all right, I'll say this, and I probably shouldn't. Like, there's one angle on the show right now. I just, I, I wish it would just stop. It's like a bad dream. It's the, um, it's the Gabriel Eugene angles. Like I said, I love the show. Uh, this is my baby. I can talk about it, right? Baby. It, right. <laughs> so, but it's like I just think it's such a ridiculous angle. But like, how great would it have been for like you and Lydia for for Addie and Lydia, Lydia to continue down the road. Right, it starts off a little, you know, and then it, get, it develops into a friendship. That would have been a really cool angle to kind of approach it with. Yeah, you know, I I think that'd be an awesome idea, and just promoting like th- there it is, like it's con- it's like a constant thing with uh, with movies and TV is the story of the the love triangle. There's the two women going after the man, and it's like it's always competition, you know, and. It, it would be so cool to see like a young, strong female relationship. Um, and, and obviously they do a lot of that on the walking dead. Um, these are younger characters clearly. So that it would have been cool to see that, but yeah, you know, they, they but, got, but you know, you're in the family, right? I mean the, the walking dead, the one thing I've learned from me uh, covering comic cons for the podcast is that of any show of any movie, uh, maybe star Wars is a close second, but as far as television shows go, fans like look at like they look at you now as part of the family i mean you realize that right i i mean yeah it's become more and more clear to me and it's it's like such a cool everyone is so kind like i i don't think i've received one well maybe maybe a couple on my instagram but (laughs) 
<laughs> mostly very positive, like welcoming messages. And it's just, it, it feels like a family and it's, it's so cool. And I feel so grateful to be a part of it. Well, in fairness, uh, Kelly, I said Walking Dead fans were faithful and dedicated. I did not say they were all were smart. Like there are definitely Walking Dead fans that, that believe that you are Addy in your real life. Uh, there's you not. Know, <laughs> that's not a question. Someone actually, someone actually asked me that the other day. If if people reach out to me and call me Addy, and I I honestly said no. No one has called me Addy. I, they all seem very aware of the fact that I am an actress playing a character, and it's sometimes people aren't always you know, they kind of mesh the two. And maybe it's because my character was so small that it wasn't, you know, like someone they had been watching forever and they felt like they knew. Um, but yeah, no one's, no one's called me Addie. They've all called me Kelly. Yeah. And one of the questions I had for you is, you know, what did you take away from your time on the walking dead? Right. Cause it could be a little intimidating. You're with some pretty heavy hitters and, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and, and I don't want, I ask this question sometimes in a, in a different way. But I like I, I I'm not talking about the family atmosphere. I I understand that you know the love on set. I understand that. But what did you somebody? And this is a question that like is such a home run for you because you're somebody who like I said you like you said takes notes on their phone, studies, mm -hmm. loves the loves the grinding part. You, that that's what you're about. And yeah. what did you, so you there's no way somebody with your pedigree turned around and said you know what this is I, I'm just stuck in you know I'm just starstruck. I'm gonna. It just take take it all. You are somebody that went back to her trailer and took notes. You're somebody who was like mental note. You might have even had a pad in your pocket and, and take notes with a pen. I don't even know. But what did you take away from this? Because I know you use this as I'm going to use this experience to make myself better down the road. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, that's that's funny because that's like part of me. That's very similar to the to to my character. Because she, I mean, part of the breakdown was that she's like, she would be debate team ca captain in, in the pre-apocalypse world and loves taking notes, nerdy, you know, uh, that's definitely me. Um, so I did take notes after, <laughs> um, afterward, uh, I most, it was mostly like very specific things regarding like how I approached a scene in terms of my acting, um, so I actually, I kind of want to go, I don't know where I put, the, I think I put it on my side somewhere, but. Yeah, I took notes on like direction that was given to me. Um, I guess generally, um, it was my first experience on uh, a TV show, so that was cool. Just to to understand uh, the vibe and how things worked. So, I mean, everything was like it worked so smoothly on that set. Clearly, it's been. I mean, it's nine years. So they've had a, a long time to get, to get it going very, um, uh, smoothly, but there was that. And, uh, you know, there was, uh, it's funny cause in October, um, my, my, my film, a knock at the door, it was going through, it was in the festival circuit for like a year and a half. And it was in October of 18 that we decided the other producers and I decided to uh, either release it or we were approached by some distribution companies, but we decided not to go with them. Um, and we decided to just either post it publicly, um, on Vimeo, which is, which is, what we're doing. but I was looking into, I, I mean, I know Greg Nicotero, um, you know, it was very established in the horror community. Sure. So there was, after one episode, I remember doing, he had, there's a, a thing called shutter, which is owned by AMC. Um, and they release horror content. And I was definitely highly considering reaching out to him about uh, doing some sort of partnership there. But, you know, it's just like all these producing things in the back of my head. Like, how, how can I make a cool, meaningful project happen? Um, so, you know, I, I kept tech, took notes on all, the, on all the people that I worked with. Who I, There were some directors that I really enjoyed being directed by and I thought worked really well with the actors and with the entire crew. Um, uh, gosh, I'm, of course now I'm blanking on his name, but there was one director I really, really loved. Um, he's directed several episodes of the show. Um, it was the one, it was Bounty, or no, no, the Evolution is the episode he directed me in. Um, Michael, Michael Satra, Satrazamus, I think that's how you might pronounce it. Yeah. Um, I just learned uh, from his directing style. Um, that was a great episode, by the way. 
I, I loved that episode and he just like commanded the set so well. So that was, that was cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, for, for, for those kids that are listening, I mean, you do things the right way and, 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 and I do have kids that listen and, and it's really important that they, because a lot of them want to be actors. They see you, they look up to you guys and I don't know. I just, you do things the right way. And w- when you were on set, Kelly, uh, was there an actor that, I mean, we, we mentioned, um, Cassidy a little bit, but was there an actor, maybe Norman Reedus or somebody that was so kind to you and really kind of said, you know what, you know, relax or do things this way. Or if you need help, talk to me was, or was there a bunch of people like that? Talk a little bit about that part of the experience. There, my scenes were so quick and I did most of my scenes with, uh, with Joe and O'Hersh and, and Jackson Pace, of course. Um, so it was, I, I feel like there wasn't really any much of that except for, cause we're kind of all, you know, around the same age. So we weren't like giving advice to each other or anything. Um, but Norman Reedus, for sure, he felt, I mean, he's, you know, the number one on the call. She's been on the show since the very beginning. He was so, so welcoming. And, uh, for our, we had like one little scene in the, in the, in his barn where I give him a note, um, to tell him what, where I rat out Henry and I say, Henry's left. Um, it was such a quick scene, but I really felt like he honestly was trying to make it the best it could be by working with me and taught. We like, we changed the line, um, a little bit. And he talked with the, the producers after I was, you know, we weren't really feeling like it was working. Um, and he has such a say on the show that they, you know, of course, let him change what, what needs to be changed to, to better the, the story. And he was just, he was so welcoming. He, he hugged me and he's like, that was our first scene together. And he was like joking around like, Oh, it's very sweet. Yeah. Just very sweet. Um, and go ahead. I'm sorry. You have to say, no, no, it's fine. The, uh, the first scene I shot with him was the, the, the one other scene I have with him where, um, uh, Caitlin Nacon and I, we, I basically tell him where the, the hideout is or whatever. And he, <laughs> on the first take, um, I talked over him because I fucked up and I, I said, <laughs> Oh, sorry. Am I allowed to say that? You're good. You're good. You're good. I messed up. And I, I, I g- said my line too soon. And after we cut, he walked over to me and he's like, you know, it's, uh, and then I interrupted him <laughs> again. And I was like, Oh no, I know. I know. I, I messed up and he did it again <laughs> and it was totally fine. And like our relationship was chill. We just, whenever I passed him and just like a little head nod, he's a cool guy. Yeah. By the way, another role you would have made a great, you would have made a great Enid by the way, just, just throwing that out there. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, so let me ask you this. So first of all, a knock at the door should be full length. All right. Enough of this eight minutes stuff. It should be a full length uh, movie. Yeah, I know. That's funny because a lot of people said that when we were bringing it to festivals, they're like, what happens next? Um, and there were so many possibilities. So we actually, so I made this film with three other, um, friends of mine who we were, we were all in the same acting class and it, it stemmed from that, that class. And once we saw the success that it was having at festivals, that's when we were like, Oh, maybe we should actually try and see what we can do with this. So we did, uh, go into development and came up with the whole story. And then my two friends, Katrina and Wendy, who, um, co-directed the short, they wrote this, they wrote the actual script. So we did write a feature, they wrote a feature length script, but it's just not where, where we want it to be. Cause it was the first script either of them had written and we kind of have moved on to other things. Our passions are, have now moved elsewhere. So I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to it and and mess around with the story a little bit, but that's that's kind of where it ended for now. So, what do you have uh, on the horizon? I have to ask you that. <clears throat> uh, yes, you do, of course. Uh, well, I have a couple of things in the works that I can't totally talk about yet because um, of you know NDA sort of stuff. But uh, I. Uh, no, I can't say that. Um, gosh, what can I say? Uh, I'm shooting a movie in June. Um, so I guess that's the one thing I can tell you about, uh, that films here in LA. Um, it's kind of like a thriller, modern day Western sort of movie. Very cool. Uh, Yeah, that'll be fun. I might get to do some screaming, uh, horror esque 
screaming, um, which I have not had the chance to do yet, which, so I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the next thing. And then there's, there's this podcast that I'm a part of, which I'm super excited about. Um, I haven't posted anything about that yet. Um, but it's a spinoff of this show called the bright sessions, which have you heard of that? I have not, but it's a cool podcast. So every episode is, it's a fiction, um, scripted podcast. And every episode is about a person who has a superpower, um, in a therapy. So it's about, it follows the therapy sessions of Dr. Bright. Um, and it's really cool. So I play, I play this girl who has a, Oh wait, I can't, okay. I can't say any more than that, but that's, yeah, it's a cool podcast and I've never done podcasts. Ooh, I'm before. reading it now. Very cool. All right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Very it out. Great. People love it. Um, so I'm excited to be a part of it. Yeah, and I have two final questions for you, if you don't want me to ask. You give me so much of your time. Thank you so much, Kelly. You're, like, you're such a of nice course. person. Yeah, and so my last question to you is this. Um, so is The Walking Dead open some doors for you? In that regard, are, are you are you very happy with, with that part of it? Has it opened? It sounds like you've got a lot going on here, which I'm so happy about. But ha- do you feel like The Walking Dead has really opened the door for you? Absolutely. I mean, it's – I guess – it's hard to tell, but it, it, it definitely feels like it. Um, I, I, you know, I signed with my first um, agent here in LA. Um, I think that had something to do with it because, you know, in LA, it's like a catch twenty two. You have to. The agents don't want you unless you book something, but people don't. You can't get booked on something unless you have an agent. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm with a great agency now, and I really love her so far. Um, it's been awesome. And I, and you know, I think casting directors now, they're the ones that you gotta, that you have to impress and, you know, because they, they're the first step to, to getting that next role. And I feel like I've been seen by a lot more of them recently, um, you know, in pilot season and everything. So it's, it's been really awesome and I'm super grateful for everything that's happening. And, and Eliza, who set this up, I um, hope I'm, I'm saying that right, was is just such a kind person who was awesome to deal with, by the way. She, she is amazing. Um, that whole team, they're my management company, and it's just a, m- mostly women, a couple guys, and they are – And they get it. They get it. And, and I'm glad you said this because like – so it's like – for me, it's like maybe 50-50, right? I, I deal mm-hmm. with people like Eliza and you and the team who are just so awesome – and then I deal with people that are the opposite of what Eliza and you and the team are. And it's so infuriating, Kelly. I can't even tell you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so glad you, you brought her up because that, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, they're, like the, they're the sweetest. And that was the, one of the things in the beginning when, we, when I was interviewing with them. We were you know, deciding if we wanted to work together. That they just want to work with – they want a family and people who – love this and you know who have good values and everything and so i felt that from them and it's been great yeah i gotta say kelly if you if you were a stock i would invest heavily in your career um you've got big <laughs> things ahead for you and i'm serious i mean I, I think you know if i had to bet on, on, on a person i mean there's no question in my mind if when we t- if we talk 10 years from now hopefully it's sooner um <laughs> uh, there's you are going to have such an incredible not that you don't already filmography and success and and you've earned all of it, and I'm so happy for you. And I, and I, I don't want to say I'm proud of you because I don't want to sound like your dad, but uh, I, I am just. I feel I, like you're my dad right now. This is <laughs> thank you, thank you. But but I'm so I'm so happy for you because as I told you, I love when good things happen to good people. Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, her name is Kelly Mack. She is an actor. She's a producer. She is a wonderful person as well. Kelly, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. You're awesome. It was so much fun talking to you. 